Evening, the person of interest in Jacob Wetterling's kidnapping pleaded not guilty to child pornography charges this week. Danny Heinrich always denied having anything to do with the abduction. Now, we're hearing from people who pointed the finger at him just days after Jacob disappeared. I remembered him. He was one of the ones whose name we gave. In 1989, Bruce Peterson worked as a jailer in Stearns County when a masked gunman kidnapped Jacob in St. Joseph. Peterson and his colleagues gave Heinrich's name to investigators. As WCCL's Liz Collin explains, a new book sheds light on possible clues like that left behind from day one. I did uh, I, almost 27 years with the Stearns County Sheriff's Department working in the jail. In his time working with inmates, Bruce Peterson got to know quite a few by name. In the 80s, a young man with dark glasses became one of them. I remember a young, skinny, kind of shy guy, didn't really loner type. In four years, Danny Heinrich was arrested twice for drinking and driving, once for burglary. Peterson remembers in jail he didn't want to follow authority. He seemed to be a little bit passive aggressive. Three years after Heinrich's last arrest, Jacob Wetterling went missing. It had an impact on a lot of people. Along with dozens of other officers, Peterson worked overtime for weeks at the Wetterling property, checking the family's mail and answering tip calls. It was very tough, you know, everyone was in somber moods, there was a lot of hugging going on. But it's what Peterson and his colleagues did just days after Jacob was kidnapped he's thought most about these last four months. Back then, investigators asked Stearns County Correctional Officers to review the jail roster and to flag anyone they should focus on. Peterson says they made a list of at least 10 people. One of them was Danny Heinrich. Court documents indicate the FBI talked to Heinrich two months after Jacob's abduction. Everything I've seen indicates that Heinrich is the guy. Rob Eben has spent the last five years researching what happened that night pouring over old newspaper stories and police reports. This is ultimately the website that really got me hooked on the case. Posing questions on different sleuthing websites. Evan published a book about the case last spring. After Heinrich's arrest last fall, he's out with a second edition, Answers in the Sand. How they moved on to other suspects just becomes really interesting and confusing. One part of the investigation seems to trouble him most, the tire tracks left in Dan Rassier's driveway, the area where Jacob disappeared. In 2003, a man named Kevin came forward to say he drove in the driveway that night, curious to see what happened after hearing the kidnapping call on a police scanner. After Kevin's admission, Stearns County shifted their focus to finding a kidnapper on foot. But Evan believes the evidence shows there were two sets of tire tracks in the driveway. He checked tire measurements on Kevin's Grand Prix with Heinrich's Ford EXP and found the tracks didn't match and one car was wider. So why rule out both sets of tires? That's why I can't understand how do you eliminate a Ford EXP or knowing that that's the model or that's the spacings, how do you eliminate that car? with a bigger car. He believes zeroing in on an abduction on foot cost the case 10 years and is the real reason the spotlight was put on that neighbor, Dan Rassier. Eben still shares his research with investigators, convinced answers are close. The same thing a former jailer in Waite Park still waits for. To this day, we're all still hoping. The Cerns County Sheriff's Office says it is not in a position to discuss any more details on the Wetterling case right now. Rob's book is going to be available next month. He'll be speaking at the Painesville Public Library in March. We've posted information about that at WCCO.com links.